So now let's take a look at what's new in Adobe Creative Suite Design Premium CS 5.5 for people that are doing web design. And of course, with the web ever evolving, ever changing, HTML5 has become a very important aspect of web design for designers, and of course, Adobe providing the best of breed tools for your web design work. HTML5 is a part of that in CSS3 as well. So let's take a look at some new things, especially for print designers who are making that transition over to the web, what it's like or what, what would it be like to now do the kind of design work you probably always dreamed of doing for the web, but just it really wasn't technically possible until now. So I'm here in the new Dreamweaver CS 5.5, which is a part of the Creative Suite Design Premium CS 5.5. And what I'd love to do is start from the beginning. What happens when you want to create a new web page? What do you do? Well, let's start with the comp. In other words, I know that I need to create a web page, but what does that web page need to look like? So for that, I'm going to switch over to Acrobat. I'm in Acrobat 10, and I have a PDF on screen that my uh, client delivered and said, I want my web page to look like this. Maybe the designer mocked it up and kind of thought, hey, this, is, this would make a great looking web page. The problem with this web page is that it's doing all kinds of things that would be bad in the web of yesterday. But with Dreamweaver CS 5.5, HTML5 and CSS3, these things are possible today. For example, you'll notice the banner at the top looks like it has transparency in it. Well, how would you do that before? You'd have to go into Photoshop and composite an image together, and it would be a static image that you would put together with that transparency. you also notice that these columns or these, these borders are rounded. Again, a concept that is new or had, didn't exist before HTML5. So how do we do this in the new Dreamweaver CS 5.5? Let's go ahead and take a look. So let's go ahead and open up that page from our site. And as you can see, it looks very much like the PDF, but there are some things that need to be addressed. First of all, I don't see any transparency. I don't see a lot of things. I'm seeing all these lines and borders and things that I probably wouldn't see on the web. And there's a quick fix for that. It's actually the Live View button. By pressing the Live View button, what I've just told Dreamweaver CS 5.5 to do is enable the WebKit renderer, the rendering engine, the same one that's powering Safari and the Chrome browser. So with that engine in place, I'm actually rendering this page the way it would look on the web, but I'm not having to go out to a browser to see it. I can do that right inside of Dreamweaver CS 5.5. And more importantly, because of the WebKit engine, I'm able to see the latest and greatest HTML5 and CSS3 live inside of Dreamweaver. So I'm seeing the transparency. I'm seeing the rollovers. I'm seeing everything the way it would look on the web. So this is actually live text, just like it would be on the web. So that's not an image. That's not Photoshop. It's actually live text in HTML5. So now we have some text here that's on a white background. What I'd love to do is make the background for this text transparent. So with that, I'll go ahead and click on the element for that particular text. I'll bring up my CSS or CSS styles panel. And with that, I'll go to the element that controls that particular uh, or the properties that control that particular element. And I can see that that particular element is set to white. So I'll go ahead and click on it. And of course, I can choose whatever color I want. And that is the way we would have done it in the past. But now I have more options in HTML5. So for example, I can click the little flyout menu here. And one of the things I can enable is the brand new, not only RGB, but RGBA or RGB alpha support. And alpha, for those of you who are video people, you would know the term alpha channel or Photoshop users would know the term alpha channel as transparency. So when I enable RGBA, then I can pick whatever color I want. And not only does it change it to that color, but it also gives me the, of course, the red, green, and blue values. And you notice that there's a comma one after it for 100%. That's the transparency value. So if I go ahead and change that one to, let's say, 0.6 to make it 60% opacity or opaque, then I get that as my background. So very cool to be able to do this. 
Now, I've gone ahead and tabbed down to the next element in my CSS properties. And what I'd love to do is change the border radius. In other words, border radius is a new element in HTML5 and CSS3. And I can now implement that right here inside of Dreamweaver CS5.5. So we'll just go ahead and start typing border radius. We'll tab over and just tell it how much you want to round those corners. So I'll say by 10 pixels, and I get a 10 pixel rounded corner. Now last but not least, over here on the right hand side, I'll move the panel out of the way so you can see it, we have this wine testing area. And again, in the past, you'd have to do that as a graphic and drop it on the page. But in HTML5, CSS3, and of course Dreamweaver CS5.5, this is live. So this text is actually an element that we can now go in and change right here inside of Dreamweaver CS5.5. So if I right click on that element and say go to code, it will take me over to the coding panel for the CSS style sheet for this particular page. And in the code, I can see that element. But more importantly, I can see the rotation of that element. So all I have to do to change the rotation, again, since we're looking at this in the WebKit engine, I would just change the rotation here to what I wanted it to be. So let's say I want it to be 45 degrees so we can see a nice change there. And if we move over so we can actually see it and move the panel, we can see that that has now changed to 45 degrees. Here we'll change it back so you can see it better. Once again, we started with 20 degrees. If we change it to 45, we can see that it is actually rotating the text live on the page. And again, we're just changing the CSS3 properties inside of Dreamweaver CS5.5. Okay, let's take a look at one more aspect of this page, and that is the video. So as you can see, we have video, and this is actually HTML5 video. So using the video tag in HTML5, we can author this directly inside of Dreamweaver CS5.5. But there's actually something that's even more important than working with the, live, with the native video, and that is how will this look on multiple devices, multiple screens. So let's go ahead and put away the CSS panel for a moment here. And what I'm going to do is click on the multi-screen button. And what the multi-screen preview will allow me to do is preview this layout for multiple screens. So for example, we have the three most popular screen sizes here, and that would be a phone, a tablet, and down below, a desktop. Now, when you think about your design, how should your design look on each one of these screens? Well, if we look at the desktop design, of course, it should be everything. It should be the exact representation of the HTML5 page that you laid out. However, when you go to a tablet, the tablet screen is not going to be as large as your desktop screen. So in this case, things are starting to fall off. The user would have to scroll back and forth. We don't want that to happen. And it gets even worse when we go down to the size of a phone because you know, we don't want the user to have to scroll too far vertically, and we don't want the user to have to scroll horizontally at all. It's just bad design. So how can we solve this problem without having to design three separate pages? We can do it with Dreamweaver CS5.5, the new multi-screen preview, and media queries, which will allow me to attach a CSS3 style sheet to each one of these displays. So let's go to our media queries. The first thing I want to do is write the queries to the document. Then I want to add one for each one. So I want to say, for my desktop, it will have a minimum width of 801 pixels. So that means if it's 801 pixels or wider, it will be most likely a desktop viewer. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to use the CSS style sheet called large, because it's a large display. Next, we'll add another media query called tablet. But this time, I don't want to set a minimum. I want to set a maximum. I want to say that, hey, if it's 800 pixels wide, it's a tablet. If it's larger than that, it must be a desktop. So we'll go ahead and choose the CSS style sheet for working with a tablet. 
Last but not least, we'll add one more, and that's going to be the one for phone. So if it's a phone device, and the multiple or the maximum width for that is going to be 400 pixels, again, we'll choose the CSS style sheet for a phone or a mobile. Now when we click OK, we'll get a much different experience for each one of those devices. If we look at the phone, that looks like a mobile app almost, but it's the exact same web content sized appropriately for a phone. If we look at the tablet, again, using the CSS3 properties, the video gets larger, the content gets wider, but it's, again, appropriate for a tablet. And last but not least, of course, the desktop doesn't change because it is, in fact, larger than the 800 pixels wide. So with that, you have now seen how designers can get started with Dreamweaver CS 5.5 and take advantage of the latest web technologies inside your Critter Suite Design Premium CS 5.5 and of course Dreamweaver CS 5.5 to author in HTML5, CSS3 for the desktop, tablet, and mobile devices. Thank you, and my name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.